Today, we're going to talk about coterminal angles. The picture shown on the screen is a simple quadrant plane with an X and Y axis. The same exact thing that you use to graph an equation. What we'll be using this quadrant plane for is making angles. So this is leading into the unit circle. There are a couple of important aspects about angles on a quadrant plane. The first aspect is that an angle always has two sides. The first side is referred to as the initial side and is always located on the x-axis. The second side of the angle is referred to as the terminal side. The direction in which the angle opens also impacts whether the angle is considered to be positive or negative. So I have mentioned in class before, but whenever an angle opens up in the counterclockwise direction, it is considered positive. And of course, the opposite would be if an angle opens up in the clockwise position, it's considered negative. So now this leads us into what a coterminal angle actually is. So according to the definition, Coterminal angles are angles that share the same terminal side. So taking a look at the green angle that I've drawn here on my quadrant plane, I'm going to go ahead and assign a value to it. So a couple of quick reminders. Remember that one quadrant of the quadrant plane is always equal to 90 degrees. And then if I add all four quadrants together, that gives me 360 degrees, which is a full circle. So in this situation, my terminal side is cutting the second quadrant in half, which means that this is about 45 degrees right here, and this is a full 90 degrees right here. So this leaves me with an angle that is 135 degrees. So I'm gonna write that out, 135. So in the standard form, opening up from the x-axis in the counterclockwise direction, I have an angle that's 135 degrees. But I should also realize that I could open up from the x-axis in the clockwise direction, which would give me a negative angle of a different degree measurement. So if we think about this, this angle right down here and this angle right here both give me a complete circle. So when you add them together, they should equal 360 degrees. So if I want to figure out what this angle is down here, I can simply just subtract 135 from 360 degrees. So I know in the clockwise direction, I have an angle that is equal to 225 degrees. But when I write the angle out, I have to include the negative sign because I need to indicate that I'm coming from the clockwise direction. So I'm going to add that onto my picture, negative 225 degrees. So here I've found two coterminal angles. 135 degrees and negative 225 degrees are both coterminal because they share the same terminal side of their angle. So after this page, we're going to do two sample problems of finding coterminal angles in both degrees and radians. And then on Quest, you have an assignment that asks you to find coterminal angles. But don't rush through this video. You need to understand these basic aspects of angles on a quadrant plane to be successful when trying to learn the unit circle. So here I have two different angles. One is in degrees and one is in radians. And this question is asking me to find coterminal angles. So we're going to start by looking at the one that's in degrees. And I have to notice a couple of things about my angle. It starts on the x-axis, so down here is the initial side, and the terminal side is over here in the first quadrant. So opening up in the counterclockwise direction, I have an angle that is 45 degrees. So an easy coterminal angle to find is simply just look for the one 
that's in the clockwise direction. So remember, both the co-terminal angles, one that opens in the clockwise direction, one that opens in the counterclockwise direction, gives me a full circle, which is 360 degrees. So the way to figure out what this is down here is simply just subtract this angle from 360 degrees. So I end up with an angle that's 315 degrees, but again, I need to remember to put my negative sign because my negative sign indicates that I'm coming from the counterclockwise direction. So now still staying on the same problem right here with this 45 degree angle, what if I wanted to find a coterminal angle, but I only wanted to look in the counterclockwise direction? So that sounds a little odd, right? Because this angle is already going counterclockwise. So you're probably wondering, how am I supposed to find a coterminal angle with the same terminal side that is also counterclockwise? So think back to our angular velocity questions where you had a bike tire and it was rotating a certain revolutions per minute. So angles on the quadrant plane can do the same exact thing. Your angle can rotate multiple times before you have a terminal side. So in this situation, I could have an angle that starts at the initial side and makes a full revolution back to the x-axis and then opens up slightly a little bit more to 45 degrees. So if I made a full revolution, that means I opened up 360 degrees. But since I did not stop at the x-axis and instead I stopped at the same terminal side, I now have to add 45 degrees to 360. So I also have an angle of 405 degrees. So what I need to realize is that 405 degrees, negative 315 degrees, and 45 degrees all have the same terminal side. So therefore, all of these angles are coterminal, and they're all going to look the same on my quadrant plane. Now let's move over to the problem that's in radians. So I know your initial instinct is to take this radian measurement and convert it to degrees and then do the problem, but we need to get comfortable dealing with angles and radians. So I'm not gonna convert to degrees and instead I'm just gonna do this entire problem in radians. So we do need to remember that a full circle that's equal to 360 degrees is also equal to two pi. So think back to your notes when we figured out the relationship between degrees and radians, we came to the conclusion that a circle is equal to 360 degrees or is also equal to two pi. So that's what I'm gonna use to solve these problems. So here I have an angle that starts on the x-axis and opens the clockwise direction to this terminal side right here. And this is equal to negative pi over three. Negative because again, we're going in the clockwise direction. So again, the easiest coterminal angle to find is always gonna be the one in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna look for the one that is counterclockwise. Remember that the angle that opens in the clockwise direction and the one that opens in the counterclockwise direction always gives you a full circle. So in the previous problem, we used 360 degrees, but here we're gonna use two pi. So what that means is whatever angle opens up in this direction plus this angle should equal two pi. So here I need to subtract this angle from two pi, but I'm gonna ditch this negative sign because the negative sign only tells me directionality. It's not something that I need to carry around with the angle. So down at the bottom of the screen, I went ahead and took care of the math. So again, I want to subtract the angle given from two pi, so two pi minus pi over three, Whenever we're subtracting fractions or adding fractions for this matter, we need to make sure that we have the same denominator. So I multiply this by three to give me six pi over three minus pi over three. So once I do this math right here, I end up with five pi over three. 
So that means that this angle opening up in the counterclockwise direction is equal to 5 pi over 3, which is the same thing as the angle that's given, which is negative pi over 3, except this is in the clockwise direction. So you can probably guess the next way to find another coterminal angle in radians is if I do multiple revolutions. So again, I could start at the x-axis and I could go in the clockwise direction and make a full revolution and then continue to open up back to pi over 3. So since I made a full revolution, I know I've opened up 2 pi, but I have to add in this pi over 3 because I didn't stop at the x-axis, I kept going. So to find my coterminal angle that opens up in the clockwise direction, I need to add 2 pi to pi over 3. So again, I went ahead and took care of the math. So when I add 2 pi to pi over 3, I need to make sure I have a common denominator, which gives me 6 pi over 3. I add this together and I get 7 pi over 3. But I cannot simply just write 7 pi over 3. I need to make sure I write negative 7 pi over 3 because I have to indicate that I'm coming from the clockwise direction. Just to solidify what we've been talking about, is finding coterminal angles, which is angles that share the same terminal side. So you can always find two coterminal angles. One coterminal angle that is coming in the same direction as the original angle. So for this one, they were both going counterclockwise right here and here, or finding the angle in the opposite direction. So this is going clockwise and this is going counterclockwise. And then I did the same exact thing with my radian measurement, except instead of using degrees, I added and subtracted 2 pi, depending on whether I was looking for the angle that's coming from the same direction or the angle that's coming from the opposite direction.